Hello everyone, I'm Said. In this video, we are going to talk about a more efficient way for having a cache in our backend API. Maybe you already have caching services in your API using Redis or in-memory cache. Both of them have some issues. For example, if you are using memory cache in the API, what's the issue? The issue is you cannot use the in-memory cache when you have distributed systems, when you have multiple instances of your API. Because when you are using the cache in the memory, it's only for the one instance and the other instances cannot use this memory cache. So what is the solution? Solution is distributed cache, which is the most popular one is Redis for using distributed cache. But still there is an issue. If you think what's the issue with the distributed cache, the issue is IO operation, network latency, because always Redis is in another server, uh, not only on your application side. So if we think about having more efficient way for a cache, then we can mix both memory cache and also distributed cache. Okay, what's the point here? The point is always accessing to the application memory is way faster than requesting to the another server and get the data from that. For example, Redis, okay, Redis is fast, but still you have some latency for the network. So why not just calling our memory and then get the required data? So here we are trying to implement an efficient way and mixing both approaches for calling memory cache or distributed cache, right? I already prepared the code for having both cache in memory and Redis. We have one API for the weather forecast, the default API in the ASP.NET template. I try to simulate the situation. Think about it like this, you have an API that is calling and getting some data from your database. For each request, you are trying to call the database, which is not good. If you have one hot path in your application and that API is calling the database, you have to use the cache. Actually, using the cache is one of the best practices in the API and backend server. Okay. So imagine that we have one service here, get forecast async, and then we try to call database for getting data. And here I just return some enumerable. So easy, so no need to implement database. I'm just trying to show you the case. If I want to run the application to see what we have currently in this situation, I can run the project from the command line, .NET run here, and if it's run, I already opened the Swagger. Okay, it's running on this port. So if I call the API, you can see there is a lot fetching data from database. So for each call, it goes to the database and calling the database from another server for getting data, which is not good. You are putting a lot of overhead on your database and also on your application. So if you are not using the cache, you cannot serve many requests. Maybe, for example, you only can serve 100 requests per second if you are not using the caching. So using cache is one of the best practices, but we need to use a more efficient way to even achieve more performance. Let's see what we can do. Here I have one cache provider folder that is contains all the code for implementing in-memory cache and also Redis cache. When we are saying that two different implementation, so we can have one interface and implementing two different way for one interface. Our interface is iCache provider contains three methods, saving the items in the cache, get, and also delete. I try to keep it simple. For saving, keep in mind that you need to pass a short time expiration for the cache. Using cache is very fast. So maybe you are tempted to use more expiration time and just put the data in the cache. But the point is you need to always think about the caching validation as well. Maybe your data and database in other places get updated. So how you can know that data that is in the cache is already outdated. 
So cache invalidation is one of the most complicated scenario in the backend server. So if you don't know how you can do the cache invalidation, you can put a comment for me. I will create another video for how you can deal with the cache invalidation. But for now, we need to pass a short time expiration for all the cache entries. Okay, so we have this interface. For example, in the in-memory database implementation, you can see I'm using the primary constructor is introduced in .NET 8. It's really cool. For the in-memory cache, we can set memory cache options, pass the expiry, and then set it to the cache. Done. Very easy. No, nothing complicated here and get async and delete async, which is again very straightforward. So this uh, was the number cache. If we want to check the Redis cache provider as well, we have iDatabase, the interface that if you want to interact with Redis server, you need to register this interface, which is part of the stack exchange that Redis, the official uh, Nougat package for the Redis server. And again, save, get, and delete, right? The only small point here, Redis cache support a few data types like string, array, or hash set, some of them. So before storing something in the database, we have to serialize the object to a string. And then when we want to get it from Redis, we have to deserialize it to the appropriate model that we are passing. Okay. So now we have one interface to different implementation, right? But if you are asking yourself how we can use those services, you need to think how we can use these two different implementation. So if there is a request coming to your API, which one we need to request first, memory cache or Redis? Because in-memory cache is way faster than the Redis because of network latency, IO operation. So first we ask memory cache. If there is nothing in the memory cache, we try to ask the Redis and get data. If not, finally we can get the data from database and then update the cache, return the result to the user. Okay, so we need to use a kind of coordinator between these two different implementations. We have one class, I call it manager, cache manager here. We have multiple implementation for the cache provider. Before checking the code here, we need to check how we can register those services in the dependency injection. So for example, here for the using memory cache, you have to add add memory cache, which is the built-in method in the ASP.NET and also registering one interface with two different implementation. Here is the code for registering Redis into the dependency injection. So we have one connection string for the Redis. If I want to check the app setting here, I'm running Redis locally for the local IP and also the default for, uh, for Redis, which is 3379. Okay, maybe the better approach is here you can put some boolean in your configuration. For example, you can say use Redis or not. If there is configuration, now we can use Redis and then you can put all of our services for the Redis. Otherwise, maybe at the beginning of the project, you don't have the Redis server and only want to use the memory cache. But here I want to use both of them at the same time. I already register all the services into the dependency injection. So let's go to the cache coordinator here. There is two methods, delete async and get or add async. Why is that? Why we didn't have save, get, delete here? Because honestly, you need to prepare an easy way for the other developer as well. You are trying to write an interface and proposing this interface to other developers. You can use this class for interacting with the cache. Instead of having two methods, you can merge them and the caller can say, is there any cache entry with this key in the cache? If yes, please return it to me. If not, you can call this method for getting the actual data from the database and then update your cache as well. Also, here is the expiration.
when we have multiple providers always we need to do some iteration on that providers and check all of them it's easy we have list of cache providers for get first we try to get something from the cache Let's start checking is there any cache entry with this key if the value is not null it means there is something in the cache so we can return it directly if not try to another one if none of those providers didn't have this kind of data in the cache we need to call the database or other resources no matter in database or third-party apis caller give us the method that we need to get data here is the trick we need to think hey, what's the point of having two implementation for the cache for example if i pass five seconds as a expiration so you are calling the database getting data from the, your database mongodb sql server anything and now trying to save it to the in-memory cache and redis if you put the same expiration for both of them it's useless why because during the five seconds the data is in in memory but after five seconds both in memory and redis will remove the data so what's the point of having second one for this reason you need to pass more expiration for the second level for the redis if user pass five seconds for you, we are trying to put the expiration for the in-memory cache as five seconds. But for Redis, we try to multiple that expiration time twice. For example, if it's five seconds for in-memory cache, we will use 10 seconds for Redis. By this way, we need to think in case of distributed cache, there is always something. For example, instance A and B okay the request first goes to the instance a and then you uh, try to check the cache providers none of them contains that key so you try to get data from database and put it in the in-memory cache and the redis right next request goes to the server b server b try to call in-memory cache there is nothing in the server b in memory because the memory is a specific per instance but when you try to get it from the redis server yes that's there and then easily they can get the data from the cache okay so here i just try to do that for the first one i put the actual expiration time but for the second one multiply it to the two and then save it to the cache provider that's the things here for get or add async and also delete is easy I just try to iterate over the providers and then delete one by one so now we have our cache provider and all of those providers in our code this is the time for using our cache manager our api is there all we need to do is getting the cache manager from dependency injection cache manager right now we need to call that api that method for get or add from the cache so here we have our method let me put the result here away cache manager dot get or add async so we need to put a key here it's better to have one class all the static values to contains all the cache keys but here i just to put it like i don't know forecast key and we need to pass a func here that is calling the actual method for getting data in case of there is no data in case of there is no e in the our cache providers we need to call it to get the data so i just can copy this code here right and then passing the timestamp for the expiration i want to put only five seconds please keep it short for the cache validation stuff okay done that's it i think there is nothing more to add get or add async passing a key and then if there is nothing in the cache trying to call the data from database here is the syntax of the func it's the, one of the basic uh, things in the c sharp and then uh, we save the data for five seconds in memory and 10 seconds for redis right let's build the project
that's fine so let's run the project and let's see our cache services is working or not clear and dot net run is running so now i want to call the api our log is try to get value from the cache or the forecast key in memory cache provider cache wasn't hit for this one and try to get value from the redis as well because this is the first time we don't have any data in those cache providers finally not found in any cache for this key fetching data from database data saved to the in-memory cache and data saved in the in-memory cache for the uh okay i think we have one lock here it should be redis so if we go for the redis cache provider yeah i need to make it this one okay so if i run the dot build build and let's run the project again now it's working first time there is no cache in your providers so it will try to get it from database and update those cache providers if i run the api here you can see there is getting data from database and also save the data in both in-memory cache with five seconds and also redis cache with 10 seconds so let me run it again because it's already five second pass the second one is hit the cache for in memory okay and no database calling if it's run again hit for the in memory cache it's gone from the in memory and now it tried to use hit the redis cache done our api is successfully working with both caching from the in memory and redis I think this is more better way for handling lots of requests for your backend API. That's very important to think. Maybe there is a small difference between the using only Redis cache and mix it with the memory because all we know that Redis cache is very fast, but we need to think about network latency. This is important for the cache. For example, 100 milliseconds. When you are trying to reduce 100 milliseconds for the api response it means a lot in case of 100 or 1000 requests per second for your api so i think this is the best way i already implement this approach for a few projects before and i was very happy with this approach after maybe there is another way to make it more efficient if you want to make your api faster so what happened if none of those cache didn't have the data you are trying to get and call your database what about having another layer which is faster than your database like i don't know Elasticsearch or some of the other databases that is way more faster than for example your sql server okay but still, the only problem here is cache invalidation, which is really complicated, honestly. But there is some ways to handle the cache invalidation. For example, using short timeout or having some current job for checking the cache and get the data from database, checking with the cache. If not updated, update the cache, something like that. I hope you enjoy this video. Thank you for your time.